Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. I just wanted to do this little video for you before my video with my recipe, but I just want to say thank you for everybody that has liked and subscribed, and I really do appreciate everybody's comments and hearing your stories and everything so relatable. I'm so happy to have helped. And I, I'm glad I can keep helping. But I really do enjoy hearing everybody's stories. And, and it seems like it's a struggle that we're all going through or have gone through and will continue to go through. But I just wanted to say thank you for coming over and uh, giving my channel a chance. Thank you again to my patrons. Every little bit helps. And now we'll get to the video with the recipe. Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna show you peach and plum jam. I've got almost everything ready. I'm almost finished cutting up my peaches and I've already got my plums in the pan over there. So I'm just gonna finish up these peaches here. And I don't know if you can see, but I've got lemon juice in there too and some over in the pot. And I don't know about where you live, but right now where I live in Utah, this is the best time for fresh fruit. I'm just cutting it up into smallish pieces and you could peel it if you want to, but I don't, I don't like to peel it. I like the skins in there, but cut off any questionable parts. I have all of my jars in this pan here. This is a double batch because it will all fit in my pot. So hopefully I have enough jelly jars. And if you don't, you could just get another jar that doesn't need to be sterilized and just use it as freezer jam. And this recipe also doesn't have any pectin. So that is ready. And before I bring you in closer, I just wanted to share with you, I'm using honey powder today in place of sugar. Although the honey powder does actually have sugar in it, but it's, it's honey. So this is ready over here. And I'll bring over the rest of my fruit and show you how we put it together. But I've had a lot of questions on why I don't use sugar. I decided to stop using sugar quite a while ago. Diabetes runs in my family, and so I, I had heard somewhere that if you have one autoimmune disease, you're prone to get another. I decided to make a change on that. So let me bring you in closer, and I'll show you how this all comes together. So I have my burner on medium-high, and just take your potato masher and mash the fruit up a little bit. And I already have seven cups of peaches and about two cups of plums in my pot with the juice of one lemon. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna cook down and it'll be easier to mash when it starts cooking, but give it a head start. So now that I've got the first little bit mashed, I'm gonna add in the rest of my peaches and mash those a little bit. Very carefully mash this, mash these peaches. The pan's really full. And mix it around a little bit to get those plums evenly mixed through. You can see how much liquid is in the pot already, even though I've only added the, the fruit and the juice of about two lemons. Once again, I have a really big spoon and one cup of honey powder, and just stir that in. Cook this and stir periodically until it thickens and boils and reduces down and keep mashing as you stir. And if you see any big chunks of fruit, just mash it against the side of the pan. So I have my little saucepan here with my lids that have just come up to a simmer. And my bubbling cauldron. <laughs> Give it one more good stir. And my large pan over here, I don't know if you can hear it, but I've got my jars in there. So again, everything, hot pads, ladle, funnel, lid lifter, jar lifter, dish rag. I'm gonna go two at a time. 
And my ladle is just about the right amount for one ladle full to fill up a jar. So wipe off the rim, lid, ring, hot pad, right back into our pan. And just keep going with the rest of them. I've mentioned before you want to have extra jars more than what you think you'll need just in case or these little freezer jam containers come in really handy if you have extra that you don't want to can into a jar. Them stacked in here they're not fully submerged but most of them are and I do have some little jars you'll see when I pull them all out so bring that back up to a boil for about 10 minutes we're gonna process those I'm gonna clean this up put the rest of this in a little jar this one's already dirty so I'll use this one and I'll show you what they look like when they come out so it's been 10 minutes and these are ready to come out of their bath You can already hear them sealing. Last one, you can hear them already sealing. And this is how much, I probably could have put enough of this into another little jar like this. By the way, aren't these the cutest little tiny jars you've ever seen? I think they are. Perfect size to give away to friends and family or neighbors or, you know, as a gift. Or if you just like to have a little bit, you know. As you can see, I've got a whole bunch, different shapes and sizes. Just use what you have. And you'll notice it's not as thick as jam that's made with pectin. Although it is, it is a nice consistency. Let's give it a try. I double dipped my spoon, but it's okay. It's my house. It's really good. It's not super sweet, but it's perfect. This would go really well on biscuits, toast with cream cheese, and then jelly on top. That would be really good. Peanut butter and jelly. I have little cookies that I make around the holidays that you put jam in the middle. Those would be really good with this jam. Maybe that will be coming soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and we'll see you on the next one.